Hi, my name is Scott Lofton, and we have a fantastic webinar today focused on the power of employer branding in the age of remote work. I'm so excited to be joined today by Erica thorson Garay, Head of Talent Acquisition at LiveRamp. Before Erica presents, we have a few guidelines I'd just like to go over for the audience. After the presentation takes place, we'll move into a discussion-based format, and our moderator will be on the lookout for questions as we like to keep the conversation relative, interactive, and free-flowing. So during the discussion portion, feel free to enter your questions in the chat uh, portion of the GoToWebinar control panel. Great, and so I would love to go ahead and transition this over to Erica. Great, thanks so much, Scott. Hi, everybody. I am Erica Thorson Gray. As Scott had mentioned, I oversee the talent acquisition team at LiveRamp. Um, I am a native San Franciscan who has been doing recruiting talent acquisition for what feels like a really, really long time, but a good, really long time. I'm enjoying what I do. Fortunate to have a great team that works with me um, and just really excited to share with you guys today how we've been able to translate and ensure that our company culture has followed us to the remote workforce that we're working in today because of COVID-19. So really appreciate this and I'm looking forward to a, a really um, robust conversation after we go through a few slides. Great, so just a little bit about LiveRamp. We are a San Francisco-based SaaS company. Um, we are, we aspire to make it safe and easy for companies to use data effectively. We're the leading um, connectivity platform. We first formed in 2005 as a company called RapLeaf. We have since, in um, over time, evolved to what we are today as LiveRamp. We became publicly traded in 2018 um, and have just really been able to expand since then. Today, we're at about 1,100 employees across the globe. Um, and my tenure with LiveRamp, I've been with the company for just over two years, and we've seen our company size nearly triple. I, we were at about 400 employees when I first started, and as I mentioned, we're close to 1,100 today across the globe. We are um, centrally located in the, in the United States. However, we do have locations both in the APAC and the UK, 17 offices across the globe. So let's just jump into the meat of really what the presentation is about today is what does remote work look like and how are we making sure that we're carrying through our company culture? Um, how did we adjust, right? Here we are all early March and it was, it, we were talking about the pandemic. We were talking about how are we going to adjust? How are we gonna make sure that our employees are safe? How are we keeping our teammates safe and um, coronavirus free, for lack of a better way of putting it? Um, and it had come down from our pandemic team is that we're, we're, we're no longer gonna allow, or no longer going to invite visitors into our offices. Well, that means that we can't have candidates come into the office. So we had to really quickly adapt from an on-site interview model to a remote interview model, which we did very, very infrequently, only in instances when um, a candidate wasn't able to travel into one of our offices, or if it was a um, somebody that was across the globe that we needed to interview. So we really needed to figure it out quickly. Um, and thankfully, I have a great team that was able to jump in and we all sat down together, talked through what made the most sense. So early March, we made this transition from having candidates come in, meet face to face with our hiring teams to going remote literally two days later. Um, so first steps that we had to do is we needed to make sure that our hiring teams were aware of it and knew how to, how to behave, for no other way to put it, as remote interviewers. It's a very different situation than sitting down and meeting somebody face to face and being able to adapt to looking at somebody over a blue jeans model, which that's our, our, um, our interviewing platform. So we were able to sit down, talk through that, talk through what some of the hiccups might be. Um, and we were still learning from them. We're three months deep and we're still learning from it day in and day out, how to make sure that we're, we're providing a, a superior remote experience. What we really did is we changed, we created, I should probably say, tips and tricks for the candidates. So many candidates hadn't done interviewing virtually. Not many people had had to sit in their living room or their dining room and actually interview with companies. So we were able to um, create a really quick tips and tricks model for candidates that we would send to them along with the meeting request for their interviews. 
along with that is that we needed to make sure that our hiring teams were comfortable with the remote interviews. They were very used to having people come in and meet with them face to face. So we need to make sure that they knew what was expected of them and how would they make it successful to make sure that they were ensuring that the candidate was comfortable throughout the process. Um, we also had recently evolved where now a few days prior to our interviews, we're ensuring that the recruiters are sitting down with their, their candidates and going over everything. So it's a prep call, which is a little bit more in depth than they used to be. We would typically do a prep call with a candidate to walk them through, these are the, can these are the hiring managers that you're meeting with, this is what type of questions you should be expecting, this is how you should prepare for the presentation if you need to give one. Um, we evolved that to also making sure does the candidate know how to use blue jeans? Do they know how to share a presentation on blue jeans? So we, we set aside 15 minutes a few days prior so that they can practice that with a recruiter and talk through what their interviews are going to look like. Um, that We learned that through trial and error, quite honestly. We also have evolved where we have our recruiting coordination team. They meet with the candidates five minutes before their first virtual interview just to make sure that the candidate's comfortable, make sure that any questions that they may have are answered, ensuring that they truly feel the live ramp culture coming through. Um, that, is, that is first and foremost, is making sure that, they, that candidates feel how important the culture is to live rampers. And that shines through throughout the entire interview process. Um, we also, going to the, the remote interview piece, we had to figure out for our engineers how do we do whiteboarding? Typically in an interview room, you stand up, there's a whiteboard on the wall and you do some whiteboarding. So we've actually used a number of different virtual whiteboarding tools. We're still trying to figure out what the best one is, but we have, we've tried a handful of them and it's working well at this point. Can always get better, but it's working well at this point. The next bullet is remote hiring. It really isn't that different. And, and I hope that nobody is, is finding that it is terribly different. The hardest part is making sure that we're gaining the trust of our candidates and of our hiring managers. We don't get to have that face-to-face -face interaction any longer where you're in person, where you can read each other's total body language. Now it's limited to a headshot uh, while you're on a blue jeans call with somebody. So we need to make sure that we are providing that, that confidence and that comfort level with our candidates. So it is a little bit different that way. But other than that, our interviews have not evolved outside of it being done remotely. You're sitting in a different environment rather than an office, but you're having the exact same conversations. So that part is what we really like to tee up with our candidates is making sure that they know that it truly is just a conversation. We're gonna ask you some pointed questions that we wanna get some, we wanna be able to base it on metrics. We would have done that whether you were in our office or if we're doing it over a blue jeans meeting. Um, one thing that I have found, quite honestly, as a plus to this, is that our decisions now are made purely based on metrics and the merits of that candidate. We're not relying on that, that first impression, how a candidate presents themselves um, physically during an interview. It really gives us the opportunity to dig in and in a non-biased way, look at their skill set and ensure that it's the right skill set for the position rather than those unconscious biases that may come up. So I'm really, I'm proud that the team has been able to evolve to that. Um, something I see as much more equitable across the organization in our hiring practices. Um, and again, it goes back to, as point three here is, the candidate experience. Um, we Something that we did when we were on site as well as we continue doing is, before a candidate comes in, we send them a little, just a coffee card saying, have a cup of coffee on us either before your interview, during your interview, or after your interview on LiveRamp. We wanna make sure and we wanna thank you for taking the time with us because we know that it's no short investment. We typically have candidates that are doing their virtual on-site interviews for anywhere from two to two and a half, in some cases, three hours. That's a long period of time and a long investment that we're asking from them. So we really want to make sure that we show our appreciation to what they're able to, um, the time that they're spending with us. We also, during that pre, um, the pre-call with the candidates, we want to make sure that, again, they're comfortable, that their jitters are let out a day or two before. They're not worried about fumbling with the, the technologies that they may need to use when they are interviewing. 
um, that has really worked. And also is that with the candidate greet, our recruiting coordinators again want to make sure that they are that the candidates are having a good experience and that they're that they really are able to put their best foot forward. And then lastly, after the, that, all the interviews, the, the virtual interviews take place, is a recruiter signs back on at the end of the call to debrief with the candidate, making sure that, that their questions were answered, that they felt confident during their interview time to share whatever feedback they may have. Um, and we do point blank ask the candidate, what could we have done better? That's the only way that we can improve is by asking for that ex the candidate experience throughout the interview process. So important. We've gotten such great feedback from candidates on that that we've been able to implement to again to ensure that they are having a solid interview experience with us. Um, and that one thing that comes along with that is we want to make sure that we're under promising and over delivering. That that sounds cliche, but it truly is something that we pride ourselves on. Is that we if we say that we're going to do something with a candidate, that we that we truly deliver on it, and we want to deliver ahead of schedule rather than behind schedule. Thank you for flipping the page on our best practices. Um, write, don't call, or backwards. I apologize for that. Don't write, call. It's so much easier to send off an email and be done with it. That's not necessarily going to provide a stellar candidate experience, nor is it going to get sometimes all the answers that you need. So I always recommend to the team is pick up the phone. If, if an email chain is two or three messages long, two or three backs and forths long, pick up the phone. So much easier to resolve things that way. Also, it is for LiveRamp recruiters is I don't want to say required, but it is strongly encouraged that every candidate that is an employee referral gets a phone call from a recruiter, whether they're qualified for the position or not. Um, employee referrals are, are golden. We want to make sure that our employees realize that we take that very, very seriously. So every candidate that is an employee referral gets a phone call. Maybe not a full-fledged interview, but they are going to get a phone call from somebody at LiveRamp appreciating the time that they took and the interest that they have at LiveRamp. Um, and also offer that they have a single point of contact within the organization. We also, if a candidate makes it to the point where they do a virtual onsite at this point, we don't just send a generic email declining the candidate saying that unfortunately you weren't selected for this role. We pick up the phone and call every single candidate to, to decline them if they were not selected for the role. This is, this is two prong. One is to be able to provide the feedback to the candidate and answer questions that they may have, but also it goes back to that candidate experience. One bad candidate experience can spread like wildfire. Um, it can it can really muddy things. So we want to make sure that there is a good candidate experience. We also ask all of our candidates, whether they had a good experience or a bad experience, got offered a job or not, we ask them to go out and write, write a review on Glassdoor or any other platform that they feel rel that's relevant to them. That gives us, again, the feedback that can help us get better down the road. Um, that I see as a really a super strong best practice of our team is asking for the feedback. So important. Um, also, going back to the, to the call pieces that you can get so much more clarification around pieces that may not have been answered throughout, whether it's your phone screen that you had with a candidate or throughout their interview process. Asking those clarifying questions verbally rather than in a written format is so much easier. And again, it's so much easier also for the candidate to be able to best express themselves that way. Um, next bullet is we explain the process. And really early on, when each recruiter does their recruiter phone screen, is that they'll explain the process to the candidate from beginning till end, and they will walk them through step by step, which is setting the stage. Um, and also setting expectations to ensure that we're meeting what the candidate is expecting. We don't, it goes back to the overpromise backwards, under promise, over deliver, and ensuring that the candidates know what steps it is. I've been a candidate and being on the reverse side of it, where you, you're just left in the dark, not knowing what's going on, not a solid experience. So we want to make sure that we combat that early on in the process. Treating candidates with compassion. Candidates are people. Um, just like you would want to be treated, I want to be treated, I want to make sure that candidates are treated with compassion. Especially in the day and age that we are today, we're, we're going into a recession if we're not already in one, people are losing jobs every day. We want to make sure that we are there 
to understand that and to treat the candidates with the respect that they deserve. Um, we also know that candidates are not, they're not going to be very happy if they're getting declined for a position, especially if we're picking up the phone and calling them. I we talk through as a recruiting team at LiveRamp about how do we how do we work through that as a recruiter? If you get a candidate that is um, frustrated by the processes that they've been going through and, and a live ramp recruiter calls, they tend to be that ear um, that the candidate may get frust may show their frustrations with the live ramp recruiter because that's the only person that may have called them back. So we've worked through how do we how do we convey the compassion compassion to all of our candidates. So important right now. It's important regardless, but right now especially being with the unemployment numbers the way that they look. Um, and you'll see communicate here a few times is we we feel that over communication is super important um, and it's communication responding to emails in a timely manner returning phone calls in a timely manner making sure it goes back to explaining the process is communicate to your candidates over and over again not only that communicate to your hiring teams making sure that they are as in the loop as possible also that makes it a better experience for the candidates because the hiring managers know exactly where we are in process. And it makes it just a much more seamless um, experience across the board for both hiring managers and candidates. Um, and lastly, don't forget to communicate. <laughs> super, super important. Um, how do we engage and retain our talent? This is something that is really important across the board. So it's not just owned by LiveRamp Talent Acquisition, it is also owned by our talent enablement team. It's owned by our people operations team. It's owned by our hiring managers. It's just solely across the board of all LiveRampers for every new hire that comes on board. We need to make sure that it is a super experience to make sure that they feel embraced. It's different now that we're doing all of this virtually. Um, so we had to adapt pretty quickly. Much like in early March when we had to adapt our online interviewing process, we also had to change what our virtual onboarding looked like, where before it was a two-day two in-person, we would fly people in to our San Francisco office, regardless of where they lived, whether if they were in EMEA, we'd bring them into San Francisco for a week. If they were in Seattle, we'd bring them into San Francisco for a few days to go through the, the, the formal onboarding program, which we call on-ramping. We had to switch that. So now people aren't going to travel. People aren't coming into the San Francisco office. People aren't getting on public transportation to make it into the office. Um, so our talent enablement team created it. So now it is a virtual. So day one, you are going to be online with your cohort of new, new hires. Um, typically, that can range anywhere from five new hires. In some cases, we've had classes as large as 20. Um, to ensure that they have a cohort of teammates that are joining at the same time, having the exact same experience. During that two-day on-ramping is, we review what LiveRamp's all about. We talk about the history of LiveRamp. We talk about the ins and outs, but the, um, what's the best way to put it? It is covering the basics, making sure that LiveRamp is understood by our new employees, our product isn't necessarily easy to explain. So we wanna make sure that our new hires understand what company they work for, the cultures, the values, and the product that we're, that we're delivering to our clients. So important. During those two days, there's some many, many, in, and I put air quotes around in-person sessions, but also they do webinar sessions as well. So on-demand training for many pieces of the puzzle that they need to be successful at LiveRamp during their first few days. Um, virtual happy hours, we, we hold those in general, but for new hires, it's really important so that they can have a time with their teams, um, making sure that they feel the love of their new teammate, that they're welcomed as appropriately as possible. Even though they may be sitting at home, we want them to make sure that they feel as though they're part of a team. And oftentimes just having breaking bread together, sometimes it's not even a virtual happy hour, right? It could be having a virtual lunch with your new teammates or a just a stand up, whatever it may be. We want to make sure that their teams are connecting in, no, in any other way that they can over an online situation. Um, 
We do, I probably should have put this bullet point first. I apologize for that. We do provide our new hires with the, all of their equipment in advance. So a, about four days before they start, their laptops get shipped out to them so that they can make sure that they can log in. Their, their login information is provided to them the Friday before they start so that they have that ability to go in, log in, make sure that all the kinks are worked out. Um, then they get the training on the actual tools during the on-ramping sessions. One thing that we actually just launched, um, and this is company-wide, we launched, it's been about 10 days now, we set up a virtual Office Depot site for all new employees, all employees in general actually, to go to and pick out office equipment that they may need. Um, I saw a horrible picture of one of our employees, horrible is not the right word, I saw a, a sad picture maybe is the best way, of one of our employees that was working off a TV tray and their kitchen table, kitchen chair. That's, that was their workspace. Um, by setting up the, the Office Depot online website for Live Rampers specifically, we offer up to a certain dollar amount to purchase whatever equipment you need, whether it's an external monitor or it's a desk. Maybe you don't have a desk um, or an office chair, a, a standing desk, some ergonomic things, making sure that you have the equipment to truly be successful as a new Live Ramper. That's part of our new onboarding as well. Um, next, we want to make sure that our new hires, whether they're individual contributors or hiring managers, that they understand our recruiting process. And we're actually working right now on creating it so it's an on-demand training session. But right now, we have somebody from the talent acquisition team attend the first day of every on-ramping to talk about the talent acquisition team, talk about what we call live hires, which is our employer referral program getting them up to speed on the tools that we use as a recruiting team. So we walk them through very briefly through our applicant tracking system that they'll be using if they wanna submit employee referrals or if they're a hiring manager, how to be able to navigate through those systems. We wanna make sure that they get that, that training early on because we really see everybody at LiveRamp as a recruiter. Um, they are our brand ambassadors and that in and of itself is, is playing a recruiting role. So it's really important that they understand how we function as a recruiting team. Um, as onboarding progresses, leading, our leaders need to make sure that they're interacting with their new hires often, and not just their direct managers. It could be skip level, it could be somebody from our leadership team that is making sure that they interact and welcoming everybody to the organization. Without that that one-on-one -on -one interaction and welcoming to the team, there could be a disconnect. Um, I'll, I'll say it numerous times is that people are sitting at home oftentimes by themselves. We need to make sure that there's a human interaction and a live ramp human interaction with our new hires to ensure that they are connected with the organization. Um, that goes back to the ongoing communication. That is, you can, we can never over communicate. We cannot do enough communicating to ensure that our new hires or candidates understand where they are and how they're doing and how welcomed they are within LiveRamp. One piece that I, I would like to elaborate on this is that we have been holding regular town halls. Um, when we were all in the office, we would hold monthly town halls. Now we're having much more frequent company-wide town halls. They're typically to every two, three weeks, but also many of our departments are holding more team-specific town halls. Our engineering team holds, I believe it's bi-weekly town halls. Our product team is holding regular town halls. People in culture is now holding monthly town halls to ensure that the communication, that there are open lines both ways. So it's not just a data dump of the leaders giving information, it opens up for Q&A as well, making sure that people's questions are being answered. We also take that a step beyond is that if questions aren't able to be answered during those town halls, we open a Slack channel for questions that may not have been able to be answered, they, that we take those questions and we put them out onto a Slack channel so that we can answer all of the questions that come up from our employees. Um, super important that everybody knows where the company is pointing. Um, that's for new hires and, and, and long-termers alike, so important. And, and lastly is the buddy system. New hires need somebody that they can pick up the phone, send a Slack to or an email to, to ask what they may think is a stupid question, 
as we all know, there are no stupid questions, it, especially as a new hire, there are no stupid questions. But there's probably questions that you don't wanna pick up the phone and ask your boss. So the buddy system allows people to reach out to somebody that's a peer, maybe on their team or a peer on another team across the organization to ask those questions of, it gives them that opportunity to find out more. Tell me about LiveRamp. Tell me about your experience within the organization. It, we've seen it be really, really beneficial. And it's, it's relationships that go on throughout their tenure with LiveRamp. It's not just during their onboarding phase. All right, tools. We have quite a tech stack, um, a, a recruiting tech stack, I should even say, at LiveRamp. Um, so we'd love to talk through those a little bit. And we've actually narrowed this down and the, the tools that I'm sharing with you now are really about for the interview process, the tech stack that we use across the board for finding people and sourcing on all of that did not dig into that here. This is truly for our interviewing onboarding process. Um, I've mentioned BlueJeans a handful of times, but that is our, our, um, our virtual um, video conferencing tool that we use. Um, it has its hiccups, but every every virtual con video conferencing tool does, but we do use BlueJeans at the moment. We, as I'd mentioned earlier, we do ensure that we train candidates on it, is that it's not always intuitive, so we wanna make sure that candidates are very, very comfortable with it before they actually have to use the tool when they're interviewing, when they need to put their best foot forward. We wanna make sure that they're prepared for that. Codility, go figure. Um, Codility is our technical assessment tool. So we've been using Codility for a handful of months. We actually just came back to using their tool after a little hiatus, um, and we have found great success in it over the last few weeks, last few months, I should say. Um, we've been able to get in. We had some training with the hiring teams, and we want to make sure also that our candidates are getting a fair shot and that they are having a validated assessment before they come on board or before they come in for their interviews. It's a really important step in our process, making sure that we're able to validate their technical skill set before we bring them on site to spend a number of hours with us. We wanna make sure that that's validated early on. Um, I'd mentioned earlier our virtual whiteboarding. We're still working through tools. Some people, there's preferences across the board. We, so we haven't landed on one specific tool just yet, but we are using virtual whiteboarding both as our employee base, our engineers are using that when they partner together for work, but we also are using it during our interview process so that candidates can whiteboard um, and the interviewers can whiteboard along with them to make sure that they can work through problems together and again, show their best work during their interview process. And lastly, in some instances, not in all instances, we are using HireVue, which is an on-demand video interviewing platform. Um, it is a platform that we use primarily for our university recruiting at the moment, where we have a predefined set of questions that we put into a higher view on-demand interview that we can send off to candidates. And the candidates can take this interview whenever, is whenever they have available time. And we found this most useful with the university because then candidates wouldn't have to worry about, do I have class at this time? The scheduling part made it much easier. They could do this after they were done with their classes at the end of the day. They could do it bright and early in the morning without having to find time on on a live ramp or schedule. Then on the flip side is that our interviewers could view the interviews whenever they, they have the time in their day to be able to review and either move candidates forward or decline candidates based on that, that initial um, on-demand interview. We found it to be a really beneficial tool to us. What are we still working to improve upon? I'm super proud of what we've done at LiveRamp um, during the, the going remote phase, but we can always get better at it. Um, and I had mentioned earlier is that we ask for feedback at every turn. We wanna make sure that we are presenting ourselves as best we can to our candidates. And that feedback is so appreciative, appreciated, excuse me. Um, but what some things just to call out very, very clearly is what can we work, what can we do better? work-life balance. And I think that this is a challenge. I don't think that it's just a live rent problem. I do think that it's a problem probably more generally is that now that everybody's working from home, how do you find that balance? Where do you draw the line? When do you close down your laptop and go and resume life? Um, and how does your laptop not call you back during the middle of the night? Um, 
that's something that we're all working really hard on to ensure that we are balancing that. We are sharing tips and tricks and tools with our leaders to ensure that they are presenting the right way and that they are um, leading by example. And that could be a matter of the leader is making sure that they are turning off their laptops or turning off their Slack at a certain time every day. Um, our excuse me, our president of products and platforms, she actually sent out an email to her team. And I, I just, I love this email. So I have to share just a piece of it is that she shared with her team is that she's taken her Gmail off of her phone. So she isn't tempted to check it all weekend long or all night long. She will only respond to emails when she's actually on her laptop. Um, and she's told her team, number one, that she has done that, but also she's told her team is that over the weekend, I will not be responding to emails or Slack messages. That, by hearing Annika say that out loud to her team, is giving them, her team, permission to do the exact same thing. And that's how we can start garnering work-life balance. It's so important that it comes from the top down. Um, it's We can still get better though, still need to work at it. Um, diversity, inclusion, and belonging. That's something that is so forefront of the media right now and in all of our minds. Um, we need to get better at that. One step that I had mentioned earlier was around when we're doing now virtual interviews, I really do think that we are able to ensure a, a fair interview process to everybody, regardless of race, religion, creed, gender identification, whatever it may be, because we are truly measuring on the metrics and the measures of that role specifically. Um, but we can still get better just as a company. And I think that the world, obviously the world in general could get much, much better at diversity, including inclusion and belonging. Um, our virtual interviewing, we've gotten better. We've learned over the last three months, we continue making iterations on it but we need to make it even easier yet. We need to make it as transparent for candidates and for hiring managers as possible. Um, this is the new norm, at least for now. Um, and we wanna make sure that it is truly as seamless as possible. And then much to the virtual interviewing, we need to make sure that our interviewers are well equipped on providing a sup superior interview experience, making sure that they are able to Find out what they need to find out to ensure that they are qualifying candidates on the right skill sets. And that's always a challenge. So we're working through that from LiveRamp's perspective. How do we make sure that we are training our interviewers so that they can truly gauge a candidate's skill set? Um, but we're getting better. We're definitely getting better. The future of work. Um, I polished my crystal ball just about every other day to make sure if, if I'm still going down the right path. But the future of work is gonna look different. I, this is an Erica perspective. I, I really see things as we've now all figured out how to work remotely is we've still, and this is LiveRamp specifically, right? Is that LiveRamp has been able to figure out how to work remotely. We have been able to continue doing amazing work without being in an office, seeing each other face to face. Um, we definitely miss the camaraderie of being in the office, but we're able to get things done. Um, there are some jobs that can't be done remotely, but a majority of live ramp jobs, majority of technology jobs can be done remotely. So we are now looking at, or the company will be looking at, what does that look like when we can go back to the office? What's that balance? Um, how do we ensure that that we are still working the most, working as smartly as possible. And that does mean working differently. It does mean opening the doors to, to looking at things from a different mindset. As I mentioned here is that we have to start with an open mindset. We can't go back to the, to the mentality of, no, we have to have everybody in the office. We need everybody to be in the office. I need to see that person in person to truly believe that they're working. Um, I think that we've come miles in the three three months that we've been working from home um, to really prove that, yep, we can do this and we can trust our employees to do the right thing, which is one of our core values is doing the right thing. Um, it's so important, but we need to continue that. And then what does that look like? Do we envision 
will live ramp or will just the economy in general lead to a more remote workforce? And, and I do think in many cases it will. Um, it will lead to a more varied workforce also because people won't, right now I, I, we have 17 offices across the globe. We could vary that by having people in every corner of the world and being able to accommodate our employee base that way, our candidate base. It opens up a, world, a whole different candidate base for us also is that if we do look at working at more remote work, um, it's gonna be interesting. I'm really excited to see what it brings. I, I'm so curious. My crystal ball, again, while it's hazy sometimes, I do think that we will see an evolution of what our workforces look like over the next months, years, um, and it's exciting. It really is exciting. All right, I think that now is the time for all of us to chat. I'm really excited about this. Fantastic, Erica, thank you so much for that presentation. Um, all right, so I think we're gonna go ahead and share our webcams. Getting mine set up here. Hey, hey Rebecca, Rebecca. good to see you. Yeah, fantastic presentation. Gosh, um, you know, I was actually going through this, so I, I had some notes that I took, and then also some questions that I, I want to ask. But as you were presenting, I, I, I got to say, a lot of the questions were already like organically uh, answered. Um, I do want to remind the the audience really quick. Uh, so we've got about 20 minutes left here in the presentation. I'd love to hear from the audience too. So if you guys have any questions for Erica, again, feel free to uh, go ahead and post those in the chat channel, and we'll try to get to those. Um, so Erica, so I think one of the questions that did pop up as we were kind of going through the presentation for me is kind of going back earlier before we hopped on the webinar and talking about some of those challenges about you know, serving a truly global uh, community across the organization, in particular to LiveRamp. And so I want to ask you a little bit about um, what are some of the things that you guys, you know, rolled out or what, what did you do, you know, globally um, in terms of, you know, the virtual uh, hiring that you had to shift to and in light of what everything, you know, has been going on. I'd love to understand, like, you know, I, in the States, it sounds like everything kind of went, you know, went off pretty swimmingly and you guys were really able to uh, just kind of click on all cylinders right away. But were there any challenges moving this to, uh, to a, a completely global uh, type of entity? And, and how did that impact, uh, impact you guys? Really good question. We, for APAC, it was a different story is that we are going off the guidelines of what the, the government in the specific APAC regions are designating. So they're actually in the offices. Um, so they're still doing face-to-face -face interviews in many instances. For okay. our, our UK offices, we've done much the same. Um, we haven't necessarily, the hiring in, in our UK offices is, the volume is considerably smaller than it is in the US. So it's on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, but we are ensuring that they are, we're trying to make sure that they get the blue jeans training as well, that they are having the same experience as we're able to use here in the US. Our hiring model is a bit different though. In the UK, we typically use external recruiters for that versus on-site or, or live ramp recruiters. So it is a little bit different than that instance. Fantastic, great. Uh, yeah, that, that just kind of piqued my uh, interest from our earlier discussion too. Um, great information there. And then uh, let me understand like, you know, um, going back to those early, early days, you know, could you maybe walk me through what, I mean, it sounds like, again, you guys, and, and I love your use case and your model uh, across the board, and I love how you kind of, everything from, from sourcing to candidate experience, all the way through to onboarding, how you guys have this really plotted out um, and set up really nicely. But gosh, take me back to that first week where you, you kind of were going, okay, we're switching into full remote, and, you know, how did you, you know, how did you get the group together? How was you as a manager translate this to the team? What, maybe some of the nuts and bolts. We'd love to understand like what that looked like. So there's folks on the on the call that might be able to listen in and, and pick up on, on what LiveRamp did to accommodate that. Absolutely. Um, thankfully, I, I rest a lot of this on my team. I'll be honest, is that they did the heavy lifting. I basically talked across the desk to somebody and said, 
hey, we need to start thinking about this, right? So our talent acquisition operations person, Caitlin, was able to put a lot of things together. We sat down, we brainstormed, right? So we're in an open office environment. So I rallied whoever was at their desk. We got to figure this out. We need to sit down and talk about it. Um, so we talked that through. Um, and there, it went off. There were a few hitches, right? I'll be honest. Is that it, Did it start off swimmingly? No, we learned as we went. Um, but where I felt, where I was the most concerned was actually getting our hiring managers to buy into, nope, you guys aren't gonna be seeing people in person any longer. That was my biggest concern. And so I started sending out emails, letting the upcoming on-sites that we already had scheduled out, letting them know, hey guys, this is gonna be changing. And I didn't get a peep. So I was actually very surprised at that and I was thankful so that we could concentrate on how to ensure that it was a good experience. Um, it was the team's idea is that, Let's make sure that when we send out the meeting request that we put together the tips and tricks, right? About what to expect during an interview, both for the hiring manager and the candidate so that they both go in knowing what to expect. Um, it was a team effort. There really is no two ways about it. Um, some early on feedback that we did get is we didn't start training. The tips and tricks didn't necessarily walk blue jeans through very well. So, a the first, I would say two, maybe three sales interviews where they were slated to give presentations, they didn't go off very well. They, they didn't know how to share their presentation on the screen, it, it was wonky. And our hiring teams came back to us and said, these people weren't ready. And we, ha you know, we went back to the hiring teams and said, that's not through any fault of the candidate. We're going through new platforms, you can't fault the candidate for not knowing that. If you didn't get what you needed during that interview, let's get another one scheduled. Don't discount this candidate based on that. So we worked through that and that's that was our first lump that we realized, okay, we need to get a little bit more detail behind the training for the hiring or for the candidates before they came on site. I hope that answered your question. Yeah, absolutely. No, that, that's fantastic, yeah. Um, gosh, and then uh, maybe just as a follow-up to that, how about, you know, because because you, you're a manager and, and um, you know, kind of going through this, maybe talk me through a little bit about, uh, from the management perspective, what, you know, what were some of the things that, you know, uh, you kind of drew from in those early days and kind of figured out like how to actually manage, manage your team effectively remotely too? Because um, you have to do both, right? You're thinking about, you know, bringing, you know, the talent acquisition side for the organization, but then also kind of your day-to-day, -day, right? Like, you know, figuring out how you manage the, your team from a day-to-day -day perspective, how, how did that impact you as well? Absolutely. So we we have part of our teams remote in the first place. So that that's normal, normal okay. for us. Um, so we had a handful of folks that are remote. So we kept that, kept the norm on that. But for those of us that sat in San Francisco, so there's 15 of us on the talent acquisition team in San Francisco. And we're like a family, right? Is that we we rib each other we give each other a hard time but we love each other to the core and that sounds crazy but it's true is that our team really operates that way we enjoy each other's company we we liked being around each other so when one day we were told it was literally an email on a monday night hey guys from our from our pandemic team we want everybody to start working effective tomorrow and this was 8 30 on a monday night and starting tuesday everybody was working remotely is that i then I went into mama bear mode thinking, how do I keep my team as engaged as we were? We, we're gonna miss each other. Um, uh -huh. So we then, I got everybody on the phone the following day during a team meeting, which we have regular team meetings anyhow, but what do we do? How do we make sure that we stay in touch? There's slacks, there's all of that, but I instated a daily standup and each standup's a little bit different. So Mondays we have a team brunch. So at nine o'clock Pacific, or the folks here in Pacific, we get our breakfast. For those of the, on the East Coast, they, they, they get their lunch and we, we, have, we break bread together. Not required, but if they want to, we get together and we just talk. It's not about work unless it happens to come up, but it's how was your weekend? Just the typical water cooler conversations. Sure. Um, Tuesdays are a regular standup, just let's touch base. How's everybody doing? Um, then on Fridays, we do a team happy hour. So we get together at the end of the day to decompress with one another. But from a leadership perspective, it's me checking in. And I don't always do this perfectly, but it is reaching out proactively to the team, just saying, how's it going today? What can I do for you? This is different. How do we make sure that you continue getting the support that you need from me? Because you can't just turn and look at me a 
a desk away and ask a question. Now you have to actually think about how do I get in touch with Erica? It's really important. And we I've made sure that I'm there and I'm available. And I hope that my team feels that that they have that availability to me, whether it's a, a Slack, a text message, a cell phone call, whatever it is, I want to make sure that I'm there and available to them. Um, that's key. And in talking, being transparent, I should probably add that transparency is key. If I'm it goes to the communication point, right? I, Communicate, communicate, communicate is not just communicate, but communicate transparently. Share as much detail about what's going on as possible. Because when in the absence of information, I feel is that you make up your own story and those stories can be really vivid and very fictitious. Um, so being as honest and as, as straightforward with the team is so important during these times of uncertainty. Absolutely, yeah, no, thank you for that. Yeah, I have a theme that I've talked to with customers and one of the, I, I think this stuck, stuck out to me a couple of weeks ago, I think at one of our virtual executive forums, I think you were a part of it, was doubling down on transparency, right? Like mm -hmm. now's the time to double down on all of these things because we don't have that, like you said, hey, turn over and you know, the person's right next to us. And I think even more so you have to have that uh, than ever, right? So that's great. So we've got, a, I think a question or two here from the audience. Uh, so I wanna get to these. So the first one is, uh, now, now that you recruit remotely, will you hire remotely slash internationally? Really good question. And we haven't figured that part out yet. We're having the conversations. We are talking about is that what will it look like when we're ready to go back to the office? Are we going to require that people work in one of our hubs or are we open to remote work? I do think that it's going to depend on the position. I think some positions we need to have teams that can get together and work as a unit where in other instances as recruiters, right? I'll use recruiting as an example, is that you can recruit from anywhere. I can have people sitting on the beach in Cancun if they want to, as long as they're getting work done. It doesn't matter. Recruiting can happen wherever you are. Um, so I do think that it's gonna be case by case. We are talking about it as a people and culture team, also about our employees, right? Is that, are we gonna allow our employees that are now working remotely to work in areas that we're not physically based today? So we're, we're, we're working that through. So I don't have a good answer for that one just yet. Do you want to get the crystal ball out maybe? I know, I know. I'm know. polishing it up. I wish yeah, I had the good answer. Go. Fantastic. And the next question is, when posting jobs, do you post, uh, do you post that there are remote or do you use a location? Good question. So we're still using locations today because again, we're not sure if we're going to go, what the remote model will look like when we go back to work. Um, it, we have had some candidates challenge us where say we put San Francisco, we need somebody to work for, in San Francisco for this position. Somebody that's, and I'll use a specific example, somebody that was in San Diego, like, well, no, I can do the job from San Diego. I'm going to be doing it when I start from San Diego. But when we get back to office work, it's expected that this rolls in San Francisco. So is this candidate going to relocate to San Francisco? Um, so we are putting the position where we're anticipating the positions we're turning to in some instances, say for our sales positions, those can be remote. Those can be anywhere, um, just as long as you can get to a major metro area and get on an airplane when we're ready to do that type of travel again. That's so we do open that up to more remote work. Gotcha. Or remote right. options, I should say. Some good questions here. So we've got about 10 minutes left. So if uh, the audience has uh, another question or two for Erica, keep them coming. Otherwise, I'm going to move on with one of my questions. Um, so I really love the fact that you you guys are showing a lot of empathy through this process, right? I think, you know, from doing the virtual happy hours to the, the connections, you know, prior to an interview, uh, to making sure the technology is set up properly, to the coffee, uh, sending up the coffee cards uh, to everyone. You guys are really thoughtful around this process. Um, what I'm kind of curious about is, you know, we're starting to, I don't want to say get used to it, and I feel like the new normal is 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 being kind of overstated now, but I think people are really starting to kind of you know, see maybe a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. I'd, I'd love to understand the perspective of recruiting a candidate and convincing them to make a change like five or six weeks ago compared to maybe the last week. And if you're seeing any, you know, difference in kind of the, the ability for the candidate to go, gosh, you know, I'm, I'm starting to feel a little bit better about things and, and I'm ready to kind of make that leap. But are you seeing any different tendencies in the candidates or any any any, any difference in, in motivation? And are there, you know, are there still a lot of, or are you seeing still a lot of challenges with that too? 
Yeah, you know, we actually have seen a, a change is we've, I was, I had a one-on-one -on -one with somebody on my team just yesterday and he was mentioning he's getting so much more responses from his in-mails where his response rate, he said, probably has doubled over the last handful of weeks. So that means that people are getting a little bit more comfortable with, yep, you know what, this is, this is the way that things are going to be. And LiveRamp, thankfully, is a a solid company. I'd feel comfortable going there, right? Is that we are financially sound, we're in a good place. So we're, we're fortunate in that aspect, right? Um, sure. Not every company is, which is, which I think that that's the scary part for candidates is that how solvent is a company. And if I take the leap from something that I, that is a known entity today to something that's not known, that's scary. Um, but we talk through with our candidates about what our long-term plan is and how we're going to get there as an organization. Because again, we talk about that during our town halls regularly. So it gives us a really good footing to go to candidates to say, we're here for the long haul. We are gonna make it through this cookie-less environment. We're gonna make it through. And, and they trust us. And I think that part of the trust comes because we are treating them as as humans, right, is that we are giving them the compassion and the, the respect that they deserve. So we feel that that gives them a little bit more trust in what we're able to tell them about LiveRamp. Absolutely, that's fantastic. And I think it also ties, it all ties back to that communication and transparency, right? Yeah. And I think, you know, again, kind of being able to double down. Um, there, was, um, there was a recruiter, I think it was a recruiter that I spoke to a couple of weeks ago and, it, much smaller, more more startup um, style environment, and they were going as far as actually bringing someone in on from the finance team to actually walk through, uh, you know the you know the particulars of how the organization was doing, just to give them that extra comfort level and, and transparency too. And so a lot of different ideas that I think are kind of floating around just to give get candidates feeling like they're on solid ground with the organization too. So good stuff there. All right, great. Um, and then also want to talk about um, maybe some specifics around the future, the, the model of recruiting, right? And so thinking about, you know, um, specifically maybe sourcing. I don't know if you guys were doing any campus recruitment events prior to mm -hmm. that. And how are you thinking about, you know, shifting those into kind of a maybe a virtual environment? And we'd love to hear maybe some of your ideas around that, how you guys are tackling that as a team. Yeah, absolutely. And we do. So we have a university team of one. So we have a UR person. <laughs> um, and you know, what's funny is earlier this year, so at the end of last UR season, Lori, our university recreation relations manager, um, she said, you know what, Erica, I don't, I'm not sure if we're finding value going on campus. Let's think about, not, about doing it more virtually. So that was even before the pandemic happened. So we got lucky. I, and I shouldn't say we got lucky, is that Lori had the forethought of, this may not be the future. This may make sense is that we can do everything virtually now. We don't need to go and spend all this, this travel expense to go out onto campus. So she, thankfully, I, I really, I applaud Lori for this. She put together a plan before all this happened. In January, she actually presented it to me. So these are the campuses that she wants to, to target. And this is how we're gonna do it without having to physically go on campuses outside of say the ones that are right next to some of our offices. Um, so we don't have to get people on planes or any of that. We can save some expense that way. Um, now we had, to, we had to convert our internship program as everybody did, right? We had to convert it pretty quickly because we weren't sure when we would go back into the office until Lori finally just drew the line in the sand and said, we're just doing this virtually. <laughs> So she did, and she put a plan together and implemented it. So she is making sure that she's driving those interns and that they are having a super experience. They've been on board for just a week now. So we're still in the very early stages of the remote internship program, but we are shifting as much as we can to virtual. It's gonna be different. It's gonna be a learning curve. I, we know full and well that it's not gonna be perfect the first season, um, but we, we were ahead of the curve. And I think that um, that's gonna be to our benefit. Absolutely. Uh, great. So with just a few minutes left, I want to just quickly check and see if there's any, it doesn't look like we have any remaining audience questions. Uh, well, gosh, Erica, I think from, from my standpoint, um, I, I feel like this has been super productive and knowledgeable. I've learned so much and it sounds like LiveRamp has really leaned in uh, to, you know, the, the kind of virtual unknown, so to speak. And just this was super informative, informative for myself. 
I know it's going to be impactful for the folks that listened. Um, so I just wanted to formally thank you for taking the time today to kind of walk us through that. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. Great. All right, Erica, take care. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. -bye. Bye.